And welcome everyone to Motorcycle Madhouse. It's Monday again. It's 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to get this show rocking with Black Dragon. If you Again, if you don't know who Black Dragon is, like I say in the interview, you do not know who you are or where you're at in the biker scene. We cover all kinds of subjects today regarding motorcycle clubs and yes the big elephant in the room and a whole bunch of other subjects before i get going i want to say this to you up north i guess they don't like the fact that i am a motorcycle club supporter and the i'm not too happy with police they said anyway they canceled me can you believe this stuff Screw you again. That's what I have to say. And I hope you're watching. You just suck my balls, too. Anyway, let's get into the show and get into the interview. And let's have some fun. Oh, wait. By the way, what am I doing? I guess, uh, you know, I just asked Greg over in the chat room. Hey, you like fish? Because Greg fishes and I love fishing and stuff. We actually got the Tattooed Outdoorsman. That's going to be premiering September 1st. And I said, hmm, let's get together and fish. We'll do the big three. We'll do the Pecatonica, uh, Sugar River, and the Rock River. So if you're in the camping or fishing or in the northern Illinois uh, area, let me know, man. I'll, you know, I'll put something together for the end of August. We'll go out there and uh, fish and camp and have a party. But let's get to the show and the interview with Black Dragon. We're about to witness a seismic event now. Let the party begin. Your healthy radio addiction starts now. Hollywood's Motorcycle Madhouse on Spotify and iTunes Radio. And welcome to this edition of Motorcycle Madhouse, and today we got a special guest, everyone should know it, if you don't, get out of the twilight zone, because everybody knows who uh, Black Dragon is, and we got him on the show today, we're gonna be talking about a wide range of issues, should be a fun interview, always love having BD on the show, I follow his channel, if you're not following his channel, you're a dingbat, anyway, we got Black Dragon. <laughs> what's up, BD? Hey, Hollywood, what's up, baby? Bad, not much, man. It's finally nice up where I'm at, man. It must be a heat wave by you, then. Man, this is Georgia. This is the South. This is the summer. This is Georgia, this is South, this is the summer. Did I say this is Georgia, this is South, this is the summer? It is. Man, you got the, so, you got mosquitoes the size of dogs down there. <laughs> yeah, listen here. I was out on my boat the other day, and I got bit by a damn fly. Now, when flies can bite you and bring blood to the surface, you know you're in the wrong damn place. Oh, man. But, uh, yeah. We we got horse flies. They're big as horses. You can ride on their backs. We got mosquitoes. We got gnats. We got it all down here. Uh, but I wouldn't be any other place. Well, it is a beautiful state, man. I uh, used to go down there. Uh, they used to call it the pumpkin party, and I loved going through Atlanta. I loved going through uh, the country part over there, and it's just a it's a beautiful state. I can't say that for Atlanta Airport. I think that sucks, but. Uh, <laughs> Nothing good about that place. Uh, oh, it, I cringe going through mess. there. I cringe going through gonna, the airport. If you're going to leave out of the Atlanta airport, uh, they tell you you have to get there two hours before you're going to leave. Right. And they mean that. Oh, yeah. I so, thought O'Hare yeah. Airport was bad. Atlanta sucks. Coming back from Orlando from NCOM, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Oh, yeah. But uh, uh, I hear you got an award down there. Yeah, 2019 uh, Entertainer of the Year Award, man. It was uh, it was a real special type of deal, some stuff uh, with family where I had to leave real quick. But uh, it was great down there talking with all the club guys. And got to give a shout-out to the uh, Sons of Silence, uh, Boar for uh, 
you know, nominated me for that. Sons of Silence, you gotta love them guys. You know, true, you know, blue, old school, hardworking uh, guys in that club. Uh, and, you know, one of my, uh, you know, because everybody asks, because I'm redesigning my uh, studio here. And uh, I usually have a picture of Taco Bowman. He's from the AOA. He's a legend, you know, in my eyes. And then yeah. you got J.R. Uh -huh. Reed. J.R. Reed is also a legend in my eyes. And J.R. was the one who actually started to get the NCOM together. Because J.R. believed really in, you know, getting the clubs to sit down, work out the problems. I think he was uh, before, you know, his time and stuff. And I think it's actually a good subject to start out with because I just put out that uh, video over on YouTube, Will Motorcycle Clubs Ever Get Along? And I was quite blunt about it. No. <laughs> it's human nature. They're never going to get along until there's a time when the feds start trying to pull stuff like Oz and then they'll maybe get it in their head. Well, it, if they don't get it together, our culture is going to be lost. Mm -hmm. But uh, for for those who don't know, what is NCOM? Well, NCOM is uh, the National Coalition of uh, Motorcycle Clubs. It actually used to be, in my time, it was the, C you know, there is still COCs, but it's on, you know, the different, uh, you know, local chapters that's gone by that. But not, NCOM is actually the Umbrella National, and that started in the 80s. And it, it's a great idea if I, you know, if you ask me, uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about freaking NCOM. You know, you got some jokers out there that run around, oh, the one percenter clubs, they run the deal, you have to pay. That's bull. Uh, I've seen more Christian clubs and 99 percenter clubs down in uh, Orlando than I did the one percenter clubs. Right. So NCOM right. is well, just, it's a beautiful organization. It, it, it's from all spectrums of uh, the club world. They're out there. They fight uh, pro motorcycle profiling right now. It's huge. And they're out there doing that. And, you know, I'm happy uh, Insane Throttle Motorcycle Madhouse is getting involved with uh, Bikers Behind Bars. It's a publication that goes all the way back into the 90s. So we're going to be working on that with them. And uh, pretty soon we'll be able to uh, tell the audience how they can get involved because it's, it, it's a great cause. It really is. But NCOM, without them, you wouldn't be wearing your colors. Well, I just want to say congratulations for your award there. You know, a lot of folks don't know how hard you work and uh, how many hours you put in. So, uh, well, I appreciate you know, that. When you work hard, sometimes people will acknowledge it. Most of the times they won't, but sometimes they will. So congratulations, man. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Really do, man. It's a great organization. A lot of misconceptions out there. That's the only thing. Uh, like about it but the misconceptions are coming from people that don't know their uh ass from a hole in the ground oh and the uh looky loos that try to talk about what we're doing from the outside looking in uh they make a lot of money on youtube doing that oh yeah they do man d d that is what always surprises me and i actually talk about it in a lot of uh videos i do you got people out there that are just 50 years old or whatever getting their first Harley Davidson. Next thing you know, they're telling others what they should be doing in the scene. And that, I think, is what disgusts me the most about what's going in the lifestyle now. I actually talked about uh, this in my uh, last episode of Motorcycle Madhouse, the internet tough guy. You know what I mean? And we deal with that every day. Well, the, the internet has made it, and you know, I've been, I've been using the internet since about 1987. Uh, I was always a computer person. Mm. Uh, I always made my living in computers. And uh, wasn't that uh, was the actually, wasn't that the time when Al Gore said he made it? <laughs> Go ahead. No, Al Gore said he did it in the 90s. So I was wondering how he did it in the 90s when we were working on some measure of it in the uh, 80s back when the damn thing was called darpa net so right uh it's <laughs> i was <laughs> very interested when he said that i was like, wow well we didn't do jack <laughs> but uh the uh you know i everything from internet dating to uh 
to uh, chat rooms, all that stuff. The only caveat you had to beware of is you're dealing with public, you're dealing with strangers, you're dealing with people you don't know, and these people can present as anything. Mm-hmm. And th- for those folks who, who believe that everything they see on TV is real, CNN doesn't lie, Fox has no hidden agenda, CBS is going to be straight with you, and anybody that puts an internet badge on and calls themselves such and such TV can be believed. Those people are foolish, but they're out there. Mm-hmm. There are sheeple, we call them, people that act like sheep, sheeple. Right. And they, they run in herds, and they can be easily herded by a snake oil salesman or some sort of uh, a carnival hawker, carnival barker, mm-hmm. all day long. And so a lot of these guys can come up and make a lot of money convincing people of things that aren't quite true with just enough information to be dangerous. Right, right. And the motorcycle club said, we have those folks too. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? It's funny you talk about how people listen because uh, you got a lot of creators out there that just talk smack, don't know what the hell they're doing, and, and people don't realize, you know, and I brought it up in the one video. We go out, me and you, we'll go out, see the vans, meet them, but you have a lot of creators that won't because, <laughs> you know what, they don't stand behind their material. <laughs> and I find well, it funny the yeah. lack of logic that people have to actually follow these people when, hey, we expose them for what they are. They they don't back their stuff up. They don't go out in public. What's that telling you? Well, see, we live in a soundbite society. There's no time for research. You have 500 things going on at one time, and you can get your fill of the information you want to know by following your favorite whatever, Mm. your favorite news station, your favorite this, your favorite that, and you get the good, feel good pheromones from just taking information as people give it and not using your God-given talents of introspection, investigation, inflection, because you're doing so many damn things. Mm -hmm. And we do this with the news, a lot of us. A lot of us will find our favorite news channel, either left-leaning or right-leaning, and these people tell us exactly what we want to hear. Our uh, feel-good pheromones turn on. And we walk away from that news channel feeling like we have a good idea of what's going on in the world. Right. Whereas others, they'll watch all of the news channels. Maybe Fox Today, CNN Tomorrow, CBS the next day, whatever the case may be. And you start to hear the BS that comes from each group of would-be uh, news journalists put in their own inflection and their own ideas and their own spin on things and you start to realize ain't nobody telling the truth. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the reasons I started the Biker News Network is because I would watch news crew after news crew talk about biker issues with absolutely no knowledge of what they were talking about. But the one thing that always will sell, motorcycle game. Mm-hmm. Motorcycle gang. Oh, well, we know that. Motorcycle gang. A group of uh, a group of bikers in New York City attack an Asian couple. These were thousands of bikers didn't even know each other. They they met on the on the internet. They show up to this uh, free for all ride. They attack an Asian couple, pull the man out, and beat him to death. Damn near to death. And. Uh, what does the news cycle say? Motorcycle gang attacks Asian couple. Mm-hmm. And people believe that that's a biker club for this thing from the truth. Right, so right. So I was like, man, the way these people affect public sentiment, we have to take the narrative into our own hands. Mm-hmm. But we're going to lose this narrative. Well, you know what's funny? Lose. You're talking about taking it in our own hands. And me and you have been facing a lot lately with the censorship on YouTube. And people don't believe that, but I know all kinds of creators going through this. And I think it's the mainstream media trying to cut out the middleman. Because we're in a niche, niche. we talk about biker stuff, 
and everybody knows biker stuff sells and next thing you know we're getting banged on the channels so i used to would tell you that uh this idea that the media is against the right wing is silly i i would laugh at that like get out of here uh until uh, until i started seeing some interesting things as I started producing biker content. And I began to realize that there is definitely an agenda in big media to defang and neutralize uh, group think that's not towards kumbaya, let the government control us all. Mm -hmm. And so if you're talking about guns or prepping or uh, any kind of uh, not following the government's lockstep uh, in a big parade column, your content is uh, likely to start being flagged. And a lot of uh, the things that I, I, I believe in, Second Amendment, things like that, a lot of those I don't necessarily believe are right-wing things or, or right-leaning agenda, but uh, it seems that they seem to think that, and I see a lot of that content, a lot of those people being uh, flagged and demonetized. Right. And well, like us, you know, we used to get just like us, but we get Buku I, I wanna, views but, on our thing, but it don't show. Well, with mm -hmm. us now, when they demonetize yeah. us. It don't show up in search results. People ain't notified right. anymore. Any of that. Right. Well, I, and I wanted to further go to say what I began to notice. Well, so how is a motorcycle club, how, how is this against society? And the idea to me that what I'm thinking is when you have a whole bunch of guys uh, that are disciplined, they have leadership, many are ex-military, uh, uh, they present a problem to organized society that wants to defang the public because these guys can arm up and form resistances and all these kinds of things. So we become part of that agenda. And, and so it just started to blow me away when all of my, my, uh, all of my things, all of my, my subjects started to become demonetized mysteriously. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm, and, and then when I came up with the biker news, and there's another idea I have as well. Nobody, no journalist is going to cover biker news better than you or I. Right. Or somebody in a motorcycle club with a channel. You got Demon's Row, you got Big Cell, you got Dibber, you got all these, uh, these uh, would-be biker journalists coming on. Mm -hmm. And... I remember when the lady Lisa Lang, is that her name, went to go yeah, Lisa interview Lang. the, uh, uh, she went to go interview, who was it? The, the uh, Mongols. Mongols. And for bikers and motorcycle clubs, that interview was a joke. Mm -hmm. I, I flipped the channel off laughing at it. Uh, she didn't glean anything. But had there been a reporter there like you or I, first of all, we would have known what questions to ask. We would have known what not to mess with. We would have known how to get some information that is good for the motorcycle set, the clubs, and public knowledge. No reporter, I don't care if they're with uh, Discovery, I don't care who they're with, they're not going to cover biker uh, news like we are. This is what we do every day. Mm -hmm. So when you look at a, a, a CNN or something, the citizen journalist a guy like you or I, who can get millions of views on one, one, uh, one topic that has to do with biker culture, and then you got to think that they got guys talking about fishing, guys, t people that are experts in whatever it is that they do, they're making these YouTube channels as citizen journalists, and the big powers that be are losing money because they're coming to see our commercials, our bikers, you know, we have bikers that watch us that follow every single one of us, mm -hmm. like Ant Squirrely, for instance, right. or Ironhead, 
or Lady Ironhead or Merlin. I, I could go down the list. There's about two or three hundred. They follow you. They follow me. They follow different. They follow us all. Mm-hmm. So we have, and and these are these are two or three hundred names I can call off the top of my head. But when I look at my videos, they're represented by thousands and thousands whose names I can't call. Right. And so we have these people watching us, and we're pulling money out of the hands of uh, the CNNs and things who now have to compete with us for advertising dollars because you're going to come to see my story on Twin Peaks way before, or, or, you know, how many months did you run stories on Twin Peaks? Oh, when yeah. It wasn't even in the news anymore. Right. The right. inside stories, interviewing people that trust us that would never trust them. Exactly. So, so they have to squeeze Google to squeeze YouTube to squeeze us out of business mm-hmm. or we are going to take more and more market share as a guy with a cell phone and a green screen sitting in a garage underneath a basement. Right. Well, and I think that's why that's I use the other avenue is my radio station. Cause my radio station is my main thing. Like I tell everybody when they see the videos and stuff going on YouTube or me doing live, I'm actually recording a radio show at that point uh because youtube and stuff i guess it's just a you know where i can keep in touch with uh fans and subscribers because everything going on with youtube now it's like yeah anytime i put up a biker news thing uh you know the yellow uh sign comes up uh not yeah. don't meet our thing then you request the review then it says well confirmed by a you know manual review it's not going to be seen blah 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 then you got yeah. your videos that go down in views <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden nobody sees the the because they uh they take away from the uh you know they have a an, a, an logarithm and uh this thing will spread Nothing spreads your your views out bigger than YouTube. Mm -hmm. YouTube has a machine that says, uh, a machine code that says, hey, you might like this if you watch that. Right. And so when they demonetize your video, the next thing that happens is it stops being spread by YouTube. Mm -hmm. So all the time and effort and money we put in a video, we don't, we, we can't recoup those funds like we were getting from advertisement. Because YouTube just takes it away. Right, it just knocks your butt out. But uh... So what I've been telling my, my viewers is, hey, uh, if you guys want to see this motorcycle content that was made specifically for you, you're going to have to... Uh, you're going to have to help us. Uh, send us a few bucks, because other than that, the stuff's going to be gone. Right. Right, and it's not cheap to make these shows either, I can tell you that. But, uh, you know, moving on to a different subject, let's talk about it. Uh, You know, the pop-up clubs, because again, in the video I talked about how, uh, you know, I think support for motorcycle clubs is like at 30% as I look at uh, all the stuff that I put out. Uh, We actually were tracking it, you know, through negative comments, polls, all that stuff. And the pop-up phenomenon, I believe, has come about because a lot of these new jacks in uh, the scene, they again, they think they can change traditions and stuff, and a lot of people are not behind the old traditions. But uh, what do you think the phenomenon's about? Well, I think that everything changes. The way that we bring clubs onto the set today it's not the way we brought clubs onto the set when I came in in 19, or, or when my club came onto the set in 1974. Um, and things change. People change. Millennials are different than Gen Xers, and Gen Xers are different than baby boomers, and so forth and so on. So uh, change is inevitable. But the idea of the pop-up club, which started... Um, uh, on the black set, uh, after I created the movie Biker Boys with uh, several other folks, uh, that was when we saw our explosion. I feel a little bit guilty for that. But um, the, the, this, this thing that we're seeing with pop-up clubs is that you're getting a lot of folks that say, to hell with motorcycle club tradition. 
And uh, they'll use this interesting romantic little phrase, why should I get a blessing from anyone? And that's the key word, the trick word, the, the word that brings people there. Um, that why should we have to go to one percenters or criminals to, to get a blessing? And they get a lot of folks uh, buying into that crap. Mm-hmm. Um, as though that's the only issue. And people, will, people are one issue. Listen, people are one issue voters. People are one issue thinkers. People are one issue movers. They, they, uh, we want new plastic, but we don't think about what it does to the environment. You know, it's just one issue. You can only think one issue big. Mm-hmm. So I see a lot of these guys sell these motorcycle clubs on one issue. And MC protocol has to do with so much more than an issue. Mm-hmm. MC protocol is about this. Most men in motorcycle clubs are pretty much alpha kind of dudes. Uh, guys that um, can handle machines, not afraid of the safety risks involved with riding motorcycles. They can fall off and lose a leg and find a way to rig that sucker to ride it again. Mm-hmm. And when you have a bunch of alpha males, especially young alpha males, all operating together in one environment, there needs to be a set of rules that governs you, or we would have absolute chaos among biker clubs killing each other. Mm-hmm. So this is the importance of motorcycle protocol. Even inside a club, if you don't have a protocol, for instance, you don't mess with a brother's girl, that's a protocol that you get your brains beat in by the whole club because people know how explosive it can be when a guy who calls himself your president, a guy you've had over to your house, a guy you've told all your inner secrets to, is now screwing your woman. That can cause half a club to get murdered. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we have protocols to help us get along, like the United States has a protocol with Great Britain, and uh, Great Britain has a protocol with China. Right. This is how men have always got down. And these people don't understand the bigger uh, goals of protocol. And what they want is, I want it now. No delayed gratification, no ability to desire to work, to gain a reputation, and to gain respect. I should just be respected because I exist, and I have given nothing, and I have worked for nothing. Just the fact that I am a citizen in America, or wherever, I should be given respect. And, brother, respect is earned. Right. Well, you know, that's one thing that uh, really concerns me with pop-up clubs. You know, the Internet is a, you know, it's a fantasy world, people. But when you go on the streets, that's real life. And you got, you know, you got people out there talking, well, like BD said, uh, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, I have this right, I have that right. When it comes to the streets, you have no rights. It has to do about respect and taking care of business on the streets. And I always and your word. word. But I always find it funny when these people go off, yeah, I'll do this and do that. And I again I talked about it the last time. These are the type of guys that when I was in the club we used to beat the shit out of. And next thing you know, they're looking up crying, actually crying, Oh, don't hurt me, don't hurt me. Well, you're running your mouth. You know, the constitution don't protect you on the street. (laughs) You know what I mean? Well, you know, and I hear a lot of these guys, and it's really kind of funny to me. And uh, we bring up the 1,000-pound gorilla in the room, the newest pop-up club, uh, the one that is going to be called Iron Guard. <laughs> yeah, I and, heard about uh, that. <laughs> that. That one is very interesting to me because it is the first motorcycle club I have ever seen. Well, I haven't seen everything. But it's the first club I have ever seen would-be club that is going to spring up by the internet alone that this is the this is very new to me understanding motorcycle clubs i've been associated with my motorcycle club for 31 years i haven't had a patch for 31 years uh, because it took me (laughs) several years to to cross over as a prospect but i've been 
hanging with those cats for 31 years. And um, the motorcycle club started in a spot in the world on a corner with seven brothers who rode on Sundays. And from there, they built a brotherhood. They started with one motorcycle. They all learned. There was about 10 when they started out in 1972. And they all got familiar with how to ride a motorcycle on one 405 Honda Scrambler. And, or it might have been a 305. And then they, uh, they, after a period of about two years, everybody got a motorcycle. So now they're riding around together. They've been riding for two years. They know each other. They have nicknames. And they start a motorcycle club. In order to start a motorcycle club, they had to go on the set, and they had to show who they were. And uh, the blessings weren't quite what they are today, but what you had to have was you had to have a clubhouse. So they went and they got a clubhouse. And from that, and from those brotherhoods, and they, they extended into an, a family. And this was a family that was with one another day and night. Somebody died, somebody had a wreck, somebody had a divorce. They were there. They built a brotherhood out of going through things similarly together. And then... About 13 years later, they got their next chapter. And another five or six or seven years later, they got a third chapter. And they didn't explode into nationwide prominence until about 2009, some almost 30 years after they began. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a brotherhood. What is not a brotherhood? is a guy you meet on the internet who sends you in a resume and says, I want to be the captain over here. And you go, okay, uh, that's it. Here's our club. Here's our brotherhood. Uh, that's a riding club to me. Mm -hmm. That's not an MC. I wouldn't join that expecting MC relationships from uh, a place that's not capable yet of being an MC. Mm -hmm. It's like putting a fake badge of honor on your back. But the problem is not that badge because I can put a cop uniform on every day of the week and ride around and even pull people over. But the first time I arrest somebody <laughs> and the real cops come, the fact of the matter is I'm not a cop. You can badge up as anything. You can put a SEAL team badge on. When it comes time to kick in the enemy's door and go take a hostage, you ain't that guy. Right. So you can ride around with MC on your back all, the th all day long. The first time you're called upon to represent that MC, you're going to find, not only is this not an MC, those ain't my brothers. Mm. They don't know me. I'm not fixing to die for somebody I met on the Internet yesterday. Are you? Exactly. Exactly. And you know what's funny? I hear the comparison to a lot of these pop-up clubs to, say, Iron Order. Now, Iron Order, if uh, people don't know, started back in the day. Uh, one uh, guy who led it was a freaking, I call him Lollipop. Uh, he was a freaking dunce. But uh, they grew so big, and they're a real big club. But one thing people don't know is now... They're actually going back, because I did an interview with some guys up in Wisconsin, cool guys. I love the Wisconsin region, you know, even though I don't support the cops in the club and all that stuff, they're still men and they, you know, they go back and say, hey, we made a mistake on how we started and now we're trying to correct that. And I know they got discussions with all the majors right now to keep from all the violence going. You know, somebody finally got up there and realized, hey, this ain't the way it should have been, and we regret how it started out and stuff. I even, the guys I talked to in Iron Order, they can't stand having cops in the club. But uh, it was written in their bylaws and stuff like that. So when people make that, you know, comparison, they really don't know what's going on behind the scene. <laughs> okay? They well, acknowledge <laughs> their way of coming up was wrong, and they're trying to fix it now. I've talked to many Iron Guard, including their national president. Iron Order. Uh, Iron, I'm sorry, Iron Order. Forgive me, Iron, Guard, Iron Order. Forgive me. <laughs> Please don't send me nasty emails. I apologize. But uh, I've talked to their national president. Um, 
And uh, I did a video a long time ago called uh, My Response to the Iron Order. Mm -hmm. uh, they had sent uh, one of their guys that actually sent a comment, and he jumped all over me, and I just had a big response for him. And so the Iron Order made it a, a point to get to me and let me know, okay, this is one, one idiot, doesn't speak for us all, and this is what we're about. And one of the first things they told me is, we did some things wrong, and we're trying to change uh, uh, some of that, a lot of that. What, what, what we are is um, not what people think. And I can, I can say for sure that a lot of what I do is not what people think. A lot of what you do is not what people think. Right. People get these notions. But um, here's the deal. If you want to start a pop-up club and you want to be unto yourself by yourself and you're just going to ride from your clubhouse around the loop and come back, you ain't never fixing to probably have no problems because ain't nobody going to know your ass even exists. But you want to start your pop-up club and come hang out with us. You want to be at our parties. You want to be at our rallies. Because nobody wants to hang out alone. Uh, everybody wants to be with like-minded, like-thinking kinds of people. So they don't start pop-up clubs and say, screw all tradition and just be with themselves. Mm -hmm. Here they are over at our function. Here they are. At, we see them all because we're the ones that have stuff going on. You just got started. We have stuff going on. We're having fun. We're having a blast. We've worked out our issues and our differences for the most part. So we're having a great time. And here your scrub butt comes in, demanding attention and demanding some kind of respect, but you're not going to do what the rest of us do to uh, be uh, recognized and understood and respected. So why would we care about you? Mm -hmm. And I think the Iron Order discovered some of that. Like uh, we can have 500 clubs up, and have 500 chapters and doing a great time, but we're riding by ourselves. We want to go over to the expo, but we can't go to the expo without 10 guys with us. And every time we go over there, we're going to get challenged and we're going to have to shoot at people, blah, blah, blah. This is BS. How do we correct this? Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, what you're finding uh, with those guys. That's why they're saying, hey, we did a lot of stuff wrong. We want to yeah, while well, they're going behind, them. you know, they're they're going behind the scenes saying, "Hey, how can we communicate where this don't happen and that don't happen?" Like, you know what clubs do. Uh, and for people, I think I brought this up to you the other day. See, I never covered this Iron Guard stuff because I don't give the attention. It's not worth giving attention to because I know that it probably don't got a good chance of going. But I came up to you and I said, you know what? Even though I dislike this guy, I don't want to see him hurt. And I think he's just naive to the motorcycle scene doing something like this. He will, it, People get killed. And it, it ain't. And I never wish that on anybody. Oh, no, of course not. You, you, know, you don't want to see you. You know, I was watching a... I like those crime shows. They, they tell you how you can never get away with killing somebody, you know, uh, and right. they show how they caught all these people. And I'm thinking, for you never to be able to get away with killing somebody, they got all these unsolved murders, but they only show the solved ones. Right. But uh, I remember this one lady saying uh, about the guy who had killed her daughter. She said, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, meaning him. Mm -hmm. he, he, she wouldn't wish that he died the way he killed her daughter. I don't wish any bad on any person. Um, it, it's, a, it's a terrible thing uh, to, to run into something that you can't manage. Right. Um, my fear with this guy, I have two fears. One is for some individual that would believe his hyperbole and find himself alone somewhere with people that are angry at this guy, but this is the closest person they have to take that anger out on. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm really uh, concerned for the people that would follow this nonsense. 
and believe in it because they see a face on the internet who speaks to some pheromones that makes them feel good. Right. That's one. Um, two is I'm worried about, and this is the bigger issue for me, I'm worried about the negative effect that those confrontations will have on the greater motorcycle club diaspora as we are fighting hard, folks like you and I, to keep our, 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 rip, our motorcycle club net reputations from getting sullied so much anymore. Right. We put out these channels for people to understand that a lot of this stuff is, uh, sells papers, sells movies. It, to make us the bad guys, the Robin Hoods, the, the outlaws, the rejects, the, uh, the good guys gone bad, this is the romantic thing that brings girls, pretty girls, and Hollywood movie tickets. Mm -hmm. But it destroys our reputation with police departments, communities, neighborhoods, councilmen, senators, congressmen, who are looking to erode our rights every single day with stop and frisk checkpoints. And uh, if you're riding two or more together in colors, you are now... Uh, a gang and you can't ride carrying a weapon and relieving us and removing us and removing from us our civil liberties and our civil rights and our right to carry and our right to assemble and our right to associate. This is why we have to stand together and stamp out people that would come on to our community with distractions and uh, strife and conflict and BS mm -hmm. because they take us all down. Just like two warring clubs who decide to have a shootout in a, in a, in a, uh, at a carnival with children running around. They erode us. They take from our, uh, they take from our, our good names and they make us all look bad. Right. So that's my bigger concern with the pop up that's going to come onto the set and cause commotion and news events for 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 the leaders of that they make a lot of money they sell a lot of patches mm -hmm. uh but you know, you know going to the don't you think again there's two different worlds there's the internet world and then there's the real world do you think these people actually understand what's gonna happen when they're rocking that three-piece patch and uh, a, a club that's been around a long time runs up. Do you think they understand what could happen? I think they absolutely have no clue. And, you know, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> I, I didn't have a clue. I remember one time I was sitting in a, uh, in a clubhouse and uh, somebody had whispered to me, hey, uh, in this particular clubhouse, if they ever shut that door up there, you need to be looking left and right real quick because that means they're getting ready to put the boots on somebody. Mm -hmm. And I kind of laughed that off. One day I'm sitting in that clubhouse and that, that door, that front door slammed shut and they threw a guy on the ground and kicked the living snot out of him, threw him out the front door. So, you know, I had my pistol on my side. So I said, uh, I said to, to the guy sitting next to me who was part of that club, I said, Hey man, if anybody ever did that to me, I would come back here and shoot this place to kingdom come. He said, yeah, you're right. That's why, if you'll notice, all the brothers are moving towards the front door. They'll be standing out in the front for the next few hours, just in case he decides that's something he wants to do. Mm -hmm. You see, you can be a Superman with one pistol until you're facing 25 Supermen with pistols. Right. And all of a sudden you realize all that yin-yang you talk is yin-yang. Sometimes you find that you're outnumbered, and that's what happens when you get that butt pulled over. They're ready for you. <laughs> they ain't, they ain't uh, just a whistling Dixie. They've been through this rodeo before. This is your first rodeo, not theirs. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and they do a lot of intelligence work before they even do anything. They know what's up. <laughs> they know what's up. So those who were out there thinking about joining a pop-up, man, you guys really better think about it. Well, well a lot of times, and what I, 
like about the MC world is, and many of these kinds of places, that people don't want trouble. A lot of times, you're going to get that warning. And a lot of times, you'll get more than one. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, we need to meet, meet with you over here at such and such. We want to sit down with you and talk about a few things. Because right. we know how ugly this is going to get. You don't. So mm-hmm. meet us over here and talk with us, man. We, we don't want no trouble. And you know what? You know what's funny about uh, you know you call it blessings or something like that, but going to the dominant, all you do is go up, say, "Hey, this is what we're thinking about," and you basically go over conversation. Okay, the colors. This club has this colors. Blah blah blah. And it's just to work out a relationship. It's not like they're going to tell you what to do. Okay, your club is your club. You know. I think it's awesome being a part of the scene on a regular deal like you talk about MC Protocol because you're going to 30 different clubs' parties, and guess what? When you throw your party, you're going to have 30 different clubs there, and you're going to make the money to support your clubhouse and your club. I do not think these people understand how the scene actually works. No, and they get led by folks that don't understand. And But, you know, hey, listen. There is something that is innately against Americanism to think that you have to go to somebody to get permission to do anything. And uh, I understand the sale. And I understand what it's like. I've been in cities where people have said, there'll be no more motorcycle clubs here. And that includes yours. So the natural instinct is to say, F you, I'll start a club anyway. And there comes a lot of issues with that. I will tell you, no city has ever kept me out. Uh, We've had to spend a little bit more time bargaining and talking and mediating. But when you have a force of men that want to do something, nobody's going to stop you. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just... But you per, you set, put the I mean, work in to back your patch. A lot of these other guys don't you understand put the work it. In. <laughs> you put the work in to back your patch. Mm-hmm. You put, and I tell everybody this, too. It doesn't matter what your percentage is. 1% or 99% or 0% or 2% or 5 I hear all these percenters running around. If you put a patch on your back, eventually you will be tested. Then you better be re- better be uh, ready to be tested or hand over to them colors because that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, you know, a couple last subjects. Uh, one, let's clear something up here. You know, you're talking about that dude. I I don't even mention his name anymore because I'm tired of giving him advertising. Uh, but uh, he said, "Oh, you know, I was going to debate this guy and debate him, and they screwed." You know. Let me set this straight, you freaking rat. We offered <laughs> to have you, in when you came to Chicago, we offered to have a sit-down debate with you, not over the phone, in person. Your reply was, I got too much to do, I can't do it. So how does that turn to, well, they didn't want to debate us? You were offered the chance in person to debate not only me, but another uh, and a club member, and you chose not to. So, enough of your freaking shit. Go ahead, B. Well, the, the lie he tells is that Black Dragon refused to debate him. And it really pisses me off. I was a national president of a motorcycle club. He was a recluse in the desert. Why on earth? Would I waste my time debating with him, and he had never even been in a motorcycle club, over subjects that had to do with one percenters, which I am not. So I'm going to go sit down and debate with him about how one percenters do this, that, and the other? Dude, go debate a one percenter. Well, he had a chance when he came to Chicago. We arranged it where a club member from a one percent club would sit down and have a debate with him, and he chose not to. He said he was too busy. So, but I tell you, sensationalism is everything. And that's how you build your numbers. You pick the one or two biggest motorcycle club channels out there, and you start a a tug of war. And I fell into it. 
and uh, and you and you fell out of it real quick. I fell into it a little more. And the reason why is uh, every couple of days the guy was making a video talking about me mm-hmm. and telling one lie after another, and people believed it. And it really it got to my ego. Listen, I have an ego, and it got to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I took my RV one time to a uh, to a big function. And I made a video. Hey, this is Black Dragon. All right, I know you guys are going to chat my butt, but I'm taking my RV to this function. I've been going here every summer for 20 years sleeping on the ground. This year, I want to sleep in my RV. This guy turned this into, and he, uh, into Black Dragon drags his bike behind his RV. And I mean, even to this day, I get maybe two, 300 people <laughs> a month. Ride your motorcycle. And I, I, I just like, wow, it's interesting to me how people believe like you could actually be the national president of a motorcycle club and the whole club's riding and you're dragging your, your bike. I mean, it just it's farcical. Uh, we ran from a uh, debate with him. A- ain't nobody running from that cat. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, you know, <laughs> we. I'm not the one who took off my colors when uh, when I got approached by uh, 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 someone who said take your colors off. That is that didn't happen to me. So uh, uh, you know, so certainly not running from him. So you know, we're running from debates and we're doing this and we're doing that. But it's great, what I call great red herrings, because the questions that will never be answered for your so-called motorcycle club is how it's going to be run like a motorcycle club. And you've never been in one. Or a prospect. So you, you can put out all the videos you want to put out, but what you're not going to say is, what do we do when we get approached? Because if we do what you did, we'll be handing over our, our vests. Mm-hmm. So it's a very easy to talk somebody else into giving up their life when you're not willing to lay down, uh, especially after you advertised yourself for, for two years as outlaw such and such. The outlaw with no club. Mm-hmm. So I would figure that the minute you were approached about your cut, you'd have knocked that sucker in the jaw and taken that ass whooping. But you would have had the respect of get, getting that cut cut off of you, like those two brothers out there in uh, uh, where the hell were they when the beast took out them two brothers? Yeah, Texas. In they Texas, they sat there and fought uh, twenty guys. Them them cats fought, man. They fought 20 guys, and they got the, uh, I got to send it to them, they got the Black Dragon Biker TV Ain't No Punk Award. Mm-hmm. They took that ass whooping. What, didn't, didn't know, they got them cuts cut off of them. Mm. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's real, that's thing, real stuff like right there. That's what you got to do when you <laughs> wear a patch, man. You got to be able to back it up. And the woman uh, who had the, the club... She, she said she was getting all kinds of threats and everything, and she was like, come on on over here. And that's a woman with no cut at all. Right. So She did that on national TV. <laughs> she said that, on, I'm not afraid of y'all. Come on over here. And they're not going to go over there and mess with that woman. Hell no. Woman. She'll probably have a 12-gauge right behind her. <laughs> Loaded with double-op <laughs> buck. Had a, <laughs> she had the nutsack to stand for her patch and her patch is that little bar over there she and her husband own that's mm-hmm. her patch right and she stood her ground for her patch right and uh i just have questions about this guy who is doing uh casting aspersions on everybody around and all the protocol and all that kind of stuff and he didn't represent his patch mm-hmm. so the rest of us are fakes right the rest of us are are uh, non bike riders uh, the rest of us don't wrench on a bike. How do you ride motorcycles for uh, 50 years and you can't change a flat tire on one? Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> or, or you can't change the, the bearings on a tire. I mean, come on, get out. This is normal stuff. Well, what's worse is these people these. actually look at one video and they make their decision on what's going on in one video. You know, regardless that they don't understand, hey, we don't sit in front of a camera all day. We do have a life and we do do stuff. And we do ride, you know, we're just not going to take a camera with us and entertain your ass the whole time. We're, it's not a reality show. <laughs> well, and, and when I ride, I don't ride back road New Mexico uh, uh, two-lane pay, 
highways and drop my bike on the desert and can't pick it up. When I ride, I ride with my club brothers because I'm in a motorcycle club. Mm -hmm. And I'm not fixing to drag a camera around. That I, I'm the guy who chose to live my life on the Internet. They didn't. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to intrude on my brother's space without their permission. And then very seldom will you actually see the inside of a club. If you want a moto vlog from me, I will do Black Dragon's uh, Blue Ridge Mountain Adventures. Right. But if you want to talk about MC protocol and politics and how to get along and how to treat your club brothers like ultimately wonderfully uh, refined pieces of precious metal gold, if these are the subjects you're interested in, then you can come with me as I go for a walk or you can listen to me while I'm sitting in my studio or we're doing this right here. This really wouldn't go over well if I was riding my motorcycle and wind was blowing and I'm trying to explain to you this, that, or the other. That's not the channel I have. Right. Your channel is so not based guys, on riding and motor vlogging. Right. And so these guys, man, I never see you on your bike. The rat is right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Let me find <laughs> The delete button for your ass. <laughs> well, you know what's even funnier is the guy actually does good video. He's just a schmuck. He's just a schmuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you I, had I, I okay. I'll had, put it to rest. You had your video. chance to debate in person. See, I like debating in person, dude. I don't like this freaking phone crap. Let's make a video of the debate. You know, you're talking about clubs. Let's sit you next to a club member and let's debate. You didn't want to. So, you know what? <laughs> He's never. STFU, okay? To answer questions with substance. You know, I made a video. It was 47 minutes long. I don't know what the hell was wrong. You, well, you know, I, let I, me interject I, there. You, I know what I, you know what I find funny, BD, is he always says, well, I talk about facts. Where's your facts coming from? Who are they? Let us examine the facts. Let's see the sources. Okay, just because you think they're facts to you is not facts to anybody else. But go ahead. Well, here, here's the thing I want to point out. Uh, you got to watch. Uh, the, the, politics has evolved into an interesting thing. Accuse the person of being the same thing he's always been against. Mm -hmm. It's that's, projecting. That's the, that's the new. That's the new politics. So if uh, if. If, if uh, I've been a cop for 100 years arresting criminals, uh, the best way to get me politically is accuse me of being a criminal. Mm -hmm. And, and you're, you're like, wait, wait a minute, what the hell is he talking about? I spent a whole lifetime. You start justifying your own self, and this person has changed the narrative. Uh, this, this guy, the rat, is a good narrative changer. Mm -hmm. uh, because he will not ever answer a fact. And you can ask the thousands of people that have been thrown off of his show off of his channel, anybody that questions him on a fact gets thrown off the channel. If they question him on a fact in his video, he goes and removes the video. Like one time he said in a video that the Outlaws Motorcycle Club out of Chicago put their motorcycles on trailers to go down to, uh, to, to Daytona Beach. Yeah. And I, I sent him a message. I said, oh, really? And the next thing you know, the video was gone. You're damn right that video was gone. He doesn't stand by anything he says. If you, you can go back and look on his channel, he'll say something and 40 minutes later take it down. Mm -hmm. Just enough to make the impact, but snatch it down. So he's never, going to, he's never going to discuss facts. He's going to say stuff, and he likes to throw red herrings. I did a video, it was 47 minutes long, talking about how dangerous it is to... Uh, uh, to, um, to, to to, to, to put this motorcycle club together and things like that. I put this out, and uh, the next thing I know, he puts out a video called F Black Dragon. And in that video, he went on to talk about how black motorcycle clubs meant nothing and how black people were nothing and how the Black Dragon was nothing. And it made a lot of headwind. But here's the deal. He never once answered a single question about the tenants of his new motorcycle club. And, and he never will. He's not a debater. He's a bullshitter. Mm -hmm. And that is the, and those are the most uh, romantic and charismatic people 
that people listen to. People love friction. Hey, man, what color is your motorcycle? You're a black guy. You shouldn't be on motorcycles. Right. You didn't answer the question. What color is your motorcycle? Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't ride your motorcycle. Wow. So what color is your motorcycle? Never be answered. So I've got a new video that's called uh, something like 10 Things. I would ask the Iron Guard before I joined up. And those 10 things are motorcycle club related questions. How are you going to run the motorcycle club? Mm-hmm. And this don't have nothing to do with Black Dragon. This ain't personal. This ain't about black people on motorcycles. This ain't about black motorcycle clubs and their importance on the set. This is about if you're considering joining Iron Guard, how will the motorcycle club be run by a person that's never even been in one? That's going to be a kick-ass video. (laughs) if, If you don't get a direct answer from a person being direct, not a F Black Dragon video, not a Black Dragon doesn't ride his motorcycle, not a Black Dragon doesn't know how to put a wrench on a bike, none of that BS that means nothing. Talk to me, a guy that's never been in a motorcycle club who wants to join the Iron God that proclaims freedom and the American way and the Constitution. Am I going to have a Constitution? Am I going to be able to vote in your club? There's a bunch of questions to be asked. Right. How long has he been riding? Well... Because, you know, I've been riding since the early 90s, man, and it, you can sniff him out. He popped up on the set three years ago, calling himself, uh, what did he call himself, Chicago Chuck. <laughs> and then next thing you know, he was talking about being an outlaw. And he rides this little bitty motorcycle. I don't even know what size that is. Is that, I've never had a motorcycle that small since I was about 15. Right. So, uh. I, he would drop it in the desert, and he couldn't pick it up, mm-hmm. which I thought was interesting because there's a procedure to pick up any motorcycle you drop. So that led me to believe he hadn't been riding a long time because I, my motorcycle weighs 1,000 pounds. My girlfriend can pick it up. Right. But you got to know that procedure, right? Mm-hmm. So that was my first clue. This is a new rider. And uh, my second clue was all the stuff he talks about uh, you can go back on my Facebook pages all the way back to the early. I, I've got pictures of me riding that go back to uh, when I was a kid. You can uh, look on my videos and stuff. You can go to uh, my websites. My, you can see pictures of me riding ever since I was a kid. I've never seen a picture of him riding any more than about three years ago. But he's the great rider. I love these guys. They take their first... 2,000 mile ride or a 500 mile ride, and all of a sudden they outride cats like us that have been riding. For, I probably got more time backing my motorcycle up to a clubhouse curb than he has going forward on a motorcycle. But I don't ride, and uh, <laughs> you don't either. <laughs> you non rider. <laughs> right. Well, I, you know, I, lo- I love the illusions, man. People don't understand, hey, we can. Uh, yeah, we might be writing and filming it, but there's a lot of editing going on, okay? You don't, again, you do not know what's going on off camera. So to say somebody, well, he rides like hell, or this guy rides like hell, you do not know. <laughs> don't be an idiot. Oh, I, I, the only I, one I, I, I can vouch at. for is Scooter Tramp Ch- Scotty, man. That dude's been on the road 25 years. And I, I don't even know how his name can come up in a sentence with this other guy's name because um, uh, the bottom line is that guy's a writer. And uh... Hi, this is James Hollywood Machapari, and if you're listening to this, you obviously like podcasts, and you'll probably like music too. On Spotify, you can listen to all that in one place for free. You don't even need a premium account. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the Motorcycle Madhouse, the one you're listening to right now. 
on Spotify. You can follow your favorite podcast so you never miss an episode. Download episodes to listen offline whenever you want and wherever you are. Easily share what you're listening to with your friends via Spotify's integrations with social media platforms like Instagram. And just search for Motorcycle Madhouse on the Spotify app. Or browse podcast in the Your Library tab and follow me so you'll never miss an episode of Motorcycle Madhouse. Spotify is the world's leading music streaming platform. And now it can be your go-to podcast too. Hollywood's Motorcycle Madhouse on Spotify and iTunes Radio. And welcome back. That was our first half of the interview with Black Dragon. We actually, I think, went an hour and 45 minutes. So next Monday, I'm going to have the second part of the interview with Black Dragon. Uh, you know what? We co- we've been covering a lot of subjects that are important to the MC scene and the biker community. And... Uh, it, it was just it's just a great conversation real interesting bds real intellectual and uh he's got a lot of good stuff that he brings up in the uh second part of the interview so hopefully you'll come by uh next monday and check that one out and i believe a good conversation needs to start coming out of some of these creator channels because right now, like BD said earlier, the mainstream media looks at the biker community as just a money horse. They love violence within the biker scene, you know, because it sells. And I won't even, you know, bullshit you. It does sell because I can put up a cool uh, radio show dealing with, okay, bikers did this for fundraising, blah, blah, blah. But I put one up with, uh, you know, outlaw clubs shooting at each other, and that a hell of a, that gets a hell of a lot more uh, listeners on it. So that's just where we're at, and I hate that that's the case, but it is what it is. You know, we have our daily biker news on Biker Angle Monday through Thursday at uh, 7 a.m., and that's doing really well. It ends up to be uh, the weekly biker news wrap up over on the radio station, but. Get you guys' questions in, man. Uh, the community uh, chat over on YouTube, I've been using that a lot more. So you can ask me questions and stuff over there. And join in the conversation and stuff like that. But hopefully you enjoyed the show today. And uh, next week again, we'll have the second half. Plus, we'll have uh, China Dow on. And uh, you know what? The beginning of the show, me and Greg started off. Hey, Greg, you want it? Because Greg lives around where I'm at. You want to go out there and have some fishing, man? Let's go out fishing, dude. We'll go fish the big three over uh, Pecatonica, Sugar River, and Rock River. And now we got a couple other people interested. You know, I figured we'd camp out uh, over in Sugar River, man, hit all the, the rivers and stuff like that. I'm a huge fisherman, huge hunting, and all that good stuff. Hopefully, I'll be able to get down to Texas, see the Kazakh one percenters, and go hog hunting. They promised me some hogs down there. So, I, I think I want to go freaking uh, crossbow hunting with it, or probably, you know, rifle. You know, hey, you guys got an AR 15 down there, Mac? Let me know. Uh, we'll hunt with that thing, man. Get me scoped out the whole nine yards. So, if you're interested in that, you can uh, info at insanethrottlebikernews.com. Uh, the Tattooed Outdoorsman, that's me. We're going to be starting that channel September 1st. It don't have to do with biker stuff. It's all about the outdoors hunting and stuff. I love that. So I'll show you, uh, you know, how I converted uh, the pickup to the back in a camper, all that good stuff. So, But with that, again, get involved with the community chat. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. I'll talk to you guys next time. Don't forget, Monday through Thursday, Biker Angle at 730 as well as a new episode on Motorcycle Madhouse Radio on, at 9 a.m. every Sunday over on Spotify. If you haven't got Spotify, you do not know what you're missing. It is free to listen to us over there on Spotify. But if you go premium, you can actually download music, the whole nine yards, everything, man. So I'll talk to you guys later.